In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Bluetooth soundbar by Heyday from Target. So the price of this Bluetooth soundbar is 60 bucks, and in the box, you get the Bluetooth soundbar itself, you get a six foot optical cable, a six foot aux cable, a six foot RCA to aux cable, and you also get a remote with batteries. These are the specs of the Bluetooth soundbar. I got this right off the Target website. I'll leave a link in the description below, so that way you can just go ahead and check it out yourself. So on top of the Bluetooth soundbar, you have the power button, the Bluetooth button, the input button. So depending on how you have this connected, you can switch between optical cable or the aux cable. You also have the play and pause button, volume up and volume down. And you can also use these two buttons to go to a previous track or go to the next track. Then in the middle, you have a microphone. So if you have your phone connected to this, you can go ahead and talk to the speakers um, with Bluetooth. And then on top, there's a little holder for a tablet. So it's nice that Target has this added onto the Bluetooth soundbar and you don't see that feature on many other Bluetooth soundbars. On the back of the Bluetooth soundbar, you have an optical port, an aux port, and a DC 15 power cable. And on the bottom, you have like these stoppers. You'll usually find these on like Ultrabooks. And um, basically they just help cause friction and they prevent the soundbar from moving. So it does a pretty good job. So you won't have to worry about this falling over or slipping. It's pretty cool that Target included a remote control with the soundbar for 60 bucks. I think that's pretty amazing. And as you can see, there's different sound modes, movie, music, and TV. You can only change those sound modes with the remote and you can't do it on the soundbar. So if you lose a remote, just keep that in mind. And also there's no way to go ahead and purchase the remote by itself. So that concludes the sound test. I don't know if you guys could tell on your end, but the TV mode definitely sounded the most distorted. Music mode was just pretty much normal. And then movie mode was, you know, had a lot more bass to it. So out of all the three modes, in my opinion, uh, the movie mode was the best mode to listen to music to on the soundbar. Now, some of you might ask why you need a soundbar. So way back then, back in like the 90s and early 2000s, you had manufacturers making big box TVs, right? So in those TVs, you could put bigger speakers and it would fill up the room. So as time went on, TVs got slimmer and slimmer. And because of that reason, you can't fit big speakers inside these smaller flat screen TVs. So now the invention of the soundbar has come out. So now you can go ahead and connect that soundbar to your TV and have a louder audio experience. Now you could go ahead and buy, you know, surround sound speakers, but no one wants to pay that extra money just to watch TV. So you might be in a big room and have a lot of people one night and you're watching something on the TV or playing a game or whatnot. And you know, you can't hear very well. So a soundbar, very inexpensive, just hook it up to the TV and now you can fill the room with better audio. Now, would I recommend the soundbar? I definitely would. For 60 bucks, it's very inexpensive and it also comes with a remote. So that's very surprising. Of course, there are better soundbars out there, but for anyone who's just looking for a budget option, and they don't need all that extra stuff with the soundbar, this is definitely a uh, great option to pick up. So that concludes the end of the video. If you guys have any questions, just leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. But um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later.